morning. morning. And if I haven't had a chance to say it already to you, Happy New Year. And I hope that you have, let's just say a better year than last year. (laughs) Hopefully it's a wonderful year, but let's just pray for a better year. Um, You may have noticed we are small in number this morning, as I said. Um, One one or two people (laughs) are self-isolating at the moment. Um, So we will do our best to get through the service as best we can. It just means that you're going to just have to sing that wee bit louder this morning to make up for those who aren't with us. Um, I've got one intimation, apart from the restrictions that I'll need to tell you about. But the flower calendar is at the front door this morning, so if anyone wants to put their name down, then the calendar is at the front door. Um, Unfortunately, there's going to be a one-way system, so everybody's going to have to go out that way. But I'm sure you'll get to the flower ca- calendar eventually. But as you can see, we're back to social distancing, only one metre at the moment. Um, and as I said, no, uh, there's a one-way system. So as we leave this morning, we'll be going that way. There's no tea or coffee again after the service. But let's just be thankful that we have a service this morning and we pray that those who are ill, um, as I said, don't become too too ill. And I would ask you all to hold them all in your prayers over the coming weeks as uh, hopefully we can navigate our way through this new series of COVID. So before our call to worship, we still our hearts and our minds just for a moment. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Those who dwelt in the land of deep darkness, on them has light shined. We have beheld Christ's glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given. In him was life, and the life was the light of humanity. And we sing our first hymn, Longing for Light. As Drew said, did we all sing up? (laughs) We've got a small number, but what a Christ we sing of.
join together in prayer. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O oh God, for making your love evident since the very beginning of time when you spoke the word which replaced the darkness of chaos with life-giving light. A light which has nurtured generations of people and plants and creatures great and small. A light which also revealed the fear and powerlessness caused by corrupt and evil actions. And so you spoke the word which would once and for all dispel the darkness of chaotic lives. <coughs> Through your love for the world, the word became flesh and lived among us full of grace and truth. <coughs> the angels carolled glory to you in the highest heavens and peace to all people on earth. And we join with them and with all people to praise your holy name. Lord Jesus, this holy day brings us gladness, grief and joy. Gladness because you left the splendour of heaven's glory to come to a dark and cold world, to bring the light and warmth of your kingdom to a world so in need of your love, your peace and your joy. Grief because you came into the world, yet the world did not receive you. You came to your own and your own did not welcome you and still today people turn away from you we turn away from you sin still scars your creation and the hearts of your own people and joy because you offer perfect forgiveness and full cleansing to all who acknowledge their need of you Cleanse our hearts today, Lord Jesus, so that we may welcome you as we long to, certain that we are also welcomed by you. And hear us now as we pray together using these words. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We turn to the Word of God, and our reading this morning comes from the Gospel of John, John chapter 1 reading from verse 1 through to <clears throat> verse 18. Listen for the word of God. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognise him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. 
John testified concerning him. He cried out, saying, This is the one I spoke about when I said, He who comes after me has surpassed me because he was before me. Out of his fullness we have all received grace in place of grace already given. For the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God, but the one and only Son, who is himself God, and is in the closest relationship with the Father, has made him known. Amen. And thanks be to God for this, his holy word. We sing together our next hymn, Spirit of God, hymn number 600. here this morning, so you are now the kids. <laughs> I know you love it. I know you love it. Have you heard about the movie that's just started showing at the pictures? Now, I'd heard that it was really, really good and that lots of people wanted to go and see it. So I went to see it with my son. Have you any idea what movie I'm talking about, Alison? That, that's a good one. That's not the one I went to see, but that's one I went to see, actually. <laughs> Clifford the Big Red Dog. I know, I know, it's a children's film, but you grow up, or your son grows up, and you used to watch it with your son, and you end up, your son goes away and you do something else, and you find yourself sitting there watching Clifford the Big Red Dog. <laughs> and now I want to see the movie. But no, it wasn't that one, it was another one I went to see. Spider-Man. Spider-Man, Spider Spider No Way Home. It was... Fantastic. I, I understand you may have to be a kind of superhero fan, but the movie was brilliant. Special effects amazing. Now, th those who had heard about the films, how did you hear about them? Advertisements? Did anybody tell you about them? No, you just saw, did you see them advertised on the, on the TV? Yeah. 
see, you, you get to see about, sometimes you get to hear about the people who have been to see it already, uh, tell you how good it is, or you get the film critics who give you reviews and you can go based on, on those. But when you share that information or when you hear that information, that, that's called, or it can be called, getting the word out there. Yeah, get the word out there. But I wanted us to think about getting the word out. Because in today's gospel story, we hear that there was going to be a new person who was going to share God's word and God's love and God's light with the Israelites. But we also hear that the Israelites didn't know about that new person yet. Just like some of us didn't know about Spider-Man No Way Home. We then hear that John the Baptist was busy telling, or busy getting the word out about this new person who we now know as, I'm looking at you Alison all the time because you're the youngest. <laughs> Who is it John the Baptist is telling us is coming? Jesus. Jesus. We now know of as Jesus. It's terrible when somebody puts you on the spot over it. <laughs> but the story uses a fancy word for getting the word out there. The story says that John the Baptist was testifying about Jesus. John the Baptist testified to the people about what Jesus was saying and what Jesus was doing, and then told the people that they should go themselves to see Jesus and hear for themselves what he was saying. This is just like when you see a movie that you really, really like, then you go and you tell others about it because it's so good. You see, today's Bible story reminds us that there were people who got the word out about Jesus, what Jesus was doing and what Jesus was saying, just like John the Baptist, and that we can do the same as John the Baptist did. We too can tell others about Jesus, just like we tell others about a good movie. But to share with others who Jesus was, we have to know who he is, what he taught and what he did. Just like we have to see the movie before we can get the word out about the movie. And when we learn what Jesus taught and what Jesus did, then we can share what Jesus, who Jesus was. We'll be sharing with others the same love, the same light, and the same healing that Jesus showed with others. And that is today's good news. And I'm going to do a prayer now and it's called a follow along prayer, a repeat after me prayer. So I'll say the first line and you just repeat after me. Dear God, thank you for Jesus who shares your love, healing and light. Please help us to share your love, healing and light just like Jesus did. Thank you and Amen. See, I knew you would like being the kids again. <laughs> Everybody loves doing it. Even, even doing the follow along prayers. Let's sing our next hymn, which again is about getting out into the world and travelling. One more step along the world. Hymn number 530.
How does the darkness affect you? With winter upon us, we've entered the season of darkness. A season when most of us wake up in the darkness and come home from work in the darkness. Now, growing up in Scotland, we experience a lot of darkness in the winter. We don't get much light in the summer, to, to be fair, but in the winter we don't get a lot. Sunrise in the winter is around 9am and sunset around 3pm with a pale weak light in between and further north it gets much worse. And each year when the darkness starts to close in, I hate that feeling of heaviness. Sometimes there's a feeling of hopelessness, a drop off in motivation and energy levels. And it's a daily struggle in the morning to find that joy for the day. However, in saying all of that, December is a month I love. Advent and Christmas are still magical times for me. But January, oh January. <laughs> January is a challenge. And I normally find myself counting the days till the lighter nights and the lighter mornings begin to return. Darkness can feel like a hopeless place. You see, it's associated with despair. Despair and fear. Sin, being lost, wandering aimlessly, and even death itself. Why is it that almost all children and even many adults are afraid of the dark at some point or in their lives. You see, we're troubled by what we can't see in the darkness. Walking in darkness can bring injury and can even feel like a time of extreme danger for us. Illegal things, bad things, are almost always done in the dark. And once they're completed, the perpetrators seek the continued cover of darkness. And the world apart from God is described as living in darkness and participating in the deeds of darkness. But did you know that even when we were living in darkness, in full rebellion against God, none of us have ever been completely without a light. Our light as Christians is the life that is Jesus. Jesus is life and Jesus is our light. We think we understand light in darkness. Light is good, darkness is bad. We get it. But there's so much more that's intended here. Light is life. Light is goodness and all things good come from God. Light is knowledge and most important, life. Light is Jesus and that light began way before Christmas. But when, G when Luke tells the story of that first Christmas, he fills us in in all those details that we love to hear. The story of a manger and a young couple and shepherds and wise men. It's a story that we never tire of hearing. But when John wrote his gospel, he has a whole different approach to Christmas. He begins his account of Christmas with three simple words. In the beginning. In other words, for John, Jesus didn't just start at Christmas. Jesus has always been in the beginning. Just before, or before there were houses, before there were roads, before there was even a Bethlehem, Jesus was God. In fact, he was the living word of God and he helped create the world in the beginning. 
before anything else existed. John tells us this in order to teach us that Jesus was God. It's a concept that is so huge, our finite minds have difficulty grasping it. That Jesus was in heaven with the Father and the Holy Spirit, but he came down to earth in the form of a human being. He walked among his people. Though he was God, he subjected himself to things like hunger and thirst and exhaustion. He was God, but he allowed himself to be insulted and teased and tormented. He walked on the earth for 33 years, an earth that he himself had created. And yet, most people never even recognised him. That's what John's Gospel says. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. Have you ever been somewhere, somewhere crowded with so many people, and you didn't know why? Until you got home and found out that you were only feet away from someone incredibly famous. That's a sort of oblivious condition in which the people of the first century lived. God was in the world, yet the world did not know him. He came to his own people and his own people would not accept him. Most people didn't have a clue. They thought he was wiser than most. Most people, they, they admired his teaching and they were astonished by his miracles, but they didn't know who he was. Some said he was a troublemaker. Others said that he was a prophet. A few recognised him as God. Some did. This is how John tells it. He was in the world, yet the world did not know him. He came to his own people, and his own people would not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God. Mission accomplished. That's what Jesus came to do. From the very beginning, that was his plan. He would come to the world and love people into the family of God. And all who follow him, all who believe in him, are no longer strangers to God. They are now children of God. Amazing grace is what that is. It's a new year and a time for new beginnings. Some of us are beginning diets tomorrow. And it's always the best day to start a diet tomorrow. Others, others of us are starting school or starting a new job or starting retirement. Still others are beginning more difficult chapters in their lives. You're, you may be starting over as a single person because of death or divorce. Or you are starting a new year as an unemployed person or as a person with a life-threatening illness. But none of us start the new year alone. Not if we believe in Jesus Christ. Because he promises to be with us every day in the coming year. <coughs> in a darkened world, he brings his light. Among people who are destined to die, and all of us are destined to die, Jesus promises us life. In a world where the past often haunts us, he chooses to forgive the past and presents us with a future that is filled with blessing and grace. It's God's promise to erase the record of your broken promises and shattered dreams. It's a second chance, a blank canvas, a new beginning for you. And, and according to John, all you have to do is receive it as a gift. And then it's yours. A 
new beginning from a loving God. So, happy new year. Happy new you. And every day, thanks be to God. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's sing a hymn now about a different type of light, the light of a star. Hymn number 302, it was on a starry night. Mm -hmm. 